Hey, what's up YouTube? Here's a quick video to briefly talk about a technique to convert any given mesh to a volume texture. So this is quite niche, right? The use case for this is quite limited to be honest, but it could be useful for VFX, custom shaped fog, and things like that, and the technique is at least worth knowing. The blueprint isn't that complex to set up, so I'll just go over its key components and the principle, and let you figure out the details to keep the video short. You're also welcome to join my Patreon, files are available as a tier 2 reward. So first, if you're unfamiliar with volume textures, think of them as textures stacked on top of each other, right? Like you have a third dimension. I link Ryan Brock's blog in the video description below because it's probably the number one place to go when you're just getting started with volume textures. There's plenty of things to learn here. So yeah, you can use a volume texture to represent, well, uh, volume, right? Say a mesh like that one. The idea is to slice it and render the generated cap section. Do that for as many steps as needed through the whole mesh and you'll have rendered all slices needed to approximately represent this mesh as a volume using a volume texture. And that's precisely what this blueprint does. Now I guess there's two solutions that comes to mind here. If you use UE5, I'd say it's best to use geometry scripting. If you're unfamiliar with geometry scripting, I'll link in the video description below the Twitter account of its main developer, I think. He provided great resources and tips and videos on how to set it up, how to get started with it and all that, so feel free to take a look at its Twitter and give him a follow while you're at it. Anyway, you'd probably use geometry scripting to boolean and slice your mesh and render the generated cap. I'm still using Unreal Engine 4 most of the time, so I personally stuck with the good old procedural mesh component, which quite handily has its own slice method, so it's very easy to use as well. Add a procedural mesh component, make it copy the mesh of a given static mesh component, apply a black material, slice it, generate the cap geometry and make it use a white material. Then render that cap geometry with a scene capture component below, do that iteratively on a loop to capture all slices, and that's pretty much it. Note that boolean operations are quite finicky sometimes, so depending on your mesh, how it's built, the geometry density and all that, you might get weird results, so it's definitely best working when using simple geometry like this. However, I'm assuming geometry scripting implements a much better boolean solution than the procedural mesh component, so again, definitely use geometry scripting if you're on UE5. Anyway, now to create an atlas texture from all those slices, you can use a material like this one. This basically makes a texture tile x times, so assuming I want to build an 8x8 atlas texture, I'd make the slice I just captured tile 8 times, and this here creates a box mask at a specific tile. So you can use this using an additive material to basically copy-paste a texture, one tile at a time, and gradually build your atlas texture from all slices you'd capture on a loop. Now pay attention to how many slices you need to generate and the render target resolution and all that, right? This list is a great starting point. Once you have that, convert the render target to a static texture, the static texture to a volume texture, and voila. Now that you have a volume texture, you can use a simple ray marching algorithm to step through it, or inject it in the volumetric fog like so, and voila, neat. Now again, it's quite niche, the next step would be to convert this to a real distance field volume texture and that would get much more interesting, but I've yet to understand how to do that, probably using a jump fluid algorithm or something along those lines. I will definitely investigate though because it'd be cool to have pair object distance fields with much greater accuracy than the one you get from sampling Unreal Engine's global distance field if needed. Ok, that's it. Project files are available as a tier 2 reward on my Patreon. Thanks for watching and thanks for your support. Consider leaving a like and subscribing to the channel if you like the content. I'll see you in the next video. Take care of yourself. Bye bye!